The British government's chief scientific advisor says medical research involving animals is essential. You might have your own view. One of the biggest animal research centres is in Oxford. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, was the only journalist allowed inside that building when it opened six years ago. He's been back to see some of the work that goes on there. Hello, reception. Hi, it's Fergus Walsh from the BBC. Oh, just pull the door, please. The building I'm visiting is in the heart of Oxford, yet you'll not find it on any tourist trail. I'm the only journalist to have ever been allowed inside the Oxford Biomedical Sciences Building, where the university does its animal research. <coughs> I'm inside one of the rooms that houses the 23 monkeys here at Oxford, and there's a macaque in front of me inside one of the pens who's playing with an empty plastic carton and foraging for nuts and raisins in the sawdust. Out of four million animal procedures last year, 3,000 involved primates. Come on, time to work. A scientist in blue overalls pushes a square steel cage up to a pen, and one of the macaques jumps inside. In a research room, the monkey is offered a choice of two differently coloured pictures. She reaches out and taps one, getting a nut as a reward. The next time she picks a second picture. Not only does she get a treat, but so does a monkey in an adjoining cage. This experiment is part of efforts to decode how our brains function, especially when we make choices affecting others. About two thirds of the work that we do is with human volunteers. Oxford neuroscientist Matthew Rushworth says they use humans when possible, but some of the monkeys are given small brain lesions to allow faulty wiring in the brain to be studied. The important thing about the animals is that they allow us to uh, manipulate in very precise ways some of these circuits that we're looking at. That gives us key insights into how some of these areas are going wrong in psychological illnesses such as depression. But the vast majority of animal procedures involve not monkeys, but mice. A researcher unclips a cage in an ultra-clean room to reveal some normal-looking mice, but they've been genetically modified to induce Parkinson's disease. Others have Alzheimer's or a heart condition. Where's the Oxford Animal Lab? This animal research has vocal critics. A decade ago, construction here stopped not because of legitimate protests, but due to intimidation by extremists. The government stepped in and took over security costs. Five years since the building opened, Sir Mark Walport, the government's chief scientific advisor, believes the mood has changed. People are becoming more confident and more transparent about the research and talking about it more, and I think that is extremely important. Every time you take pretty much a pharmaceutical agent, you are actually benefiting from many years of research on humans and on animals. But critics say animal research is both immoral and scientifically flawed. At a cafe in North London, I met Michelle Few from the British Union for the abolition of vivisection. What we want is medicine that's actually relevant to humans. So I'm not suggesting that you would put an untried drug straight into a human being, but what you would do is that you would use modern methods such as cell culture, such as computer modeling, that are relevant to the human condition. When you walk out of a pharmacy clutching your medicine, you probably never think about the role that animals play in the development of drugs. There is one thing both sides of this debate would welcome, and that is more information for the public and greater openness about animal procedures. Fergus Walsh reporting 526.